Welcome everyone back to the Find Your Leadership Confidence Summit. I'm Vicki Nettling, your host, coming to you from Roswell, Georgia. And we have another exciting author and publisher here today to talk to you. She is a good friend and uh, has published one of my books. So I am so excited to welcome Karen Strauss. Karen has had held various positions in the publishing industry for over 35 years. She worked at Random House, Macmillan, Crown and Avon in sales, marketing and publicity. She has worked with celebrities such as President Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Stewart, Martha Stewart, George F. Will, and Og Mandino. In 2010, Karen founded Hybrid Global Publishing, a firm that works with entrepreneurs, speakers, and coaches to help them write, publish, and distribute, as well as promote their books in order to generate unlimited leads. She'll, these books help us get on more stages and be able to grow our business, attracting more clients. Karen has helped over a thousand business owners become successful published authors and has helped 700 authors reach number one best-selling status. Please join me in welcoming Karen Strauss. Hey, Karen. Hey, Vicki. Hey, it's so, so nice to see you. Good to see you. It is so good to see you. I am so excited. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you did help me publish one of my collaborative books and it was a breeze. And you and I are going to be working on my own book, which I'm so excited about. Ooh, very exciting. But uh, as we have been doing, if you could just for a few moments, just share your why. Why did you leave the cushy corporate job and take on this whole new business venture? The cushy corporate job that paid $30,000 a year. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I always felt that I was destined for entrepreneurship, that I wanted to really kind of choose my own destiny, if you will. Um, I also noticed when I was in a corporate setting that I, as a woman, as a female, my voice was never being heard. Mm. And so what's really interesting sitting around uh, in, a, in a conference room um, and, and basically um, I, would, I would send out an idea, right? And everybody would kind of be quiet. And then the next guy would actually say the same thing that I just said. And they went, great idea, Joe. Mm. <laughs> you know, and so I began to feel less than. Yeah. I began to feel like I um, didn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so I, one of my whys is really, um, basically, I want to help um, people get out of that trap, in a sense, mm -hmm. that you are not less than, you, you really matter. Your voice has impact in the world. And so I felt a calling to help people um, do that and get out in the world by writing and publishing a book. And I think that's what resonates so much between um, my uh, partnership, your my friendship with you is the fact that we both have that same goal. You help us write it down and get it out there. And I help you, once you write it down, share with the world, with your passion, with your power, why you you know people need to listen to you. I've been in those corporate meetings where there have been plenty of Joes that killed your ideas and then it, what happens is it kills your confidence, it kills your creativity, and you don't speak up, and you you have these great ideas, and, and you let somebody else get the credit for them. Exactly right. Exactly right. That, and it's debilitating. And so yeah. I found myself over the years, um, you know, really not understanding my power. Yeah. You know, oh, that, God, yeah. you know, in fact, I would squish my power mm -hmm. because it was too much yeah. in a corporate situation. It, it's almost like you feel like they're saying, well, what right have you to 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 say anything? That's right. You know, I, right. I know it all. It's my ideas. It's my way or the highway. Right. And 
you know, that's, that's when I started to change my leadership style because I saw that not just in myself, but in others. And, and I, <clears throat> you know, and that's why I wanted to have you on this program. That I, because... I just want to uh, mention a, like a brief thing. Sure. Um, so I um, went from a small publishing company and then got this uh, great job as a sales manager at a very large company. And so I remember we had, I was in my first uh, conference discussing a celebrity author and what we were going to do and so on and so forth. And the director of publishing said to me, Karen, I don't want to hear one word from you regarding any sales reps or anything you want to do with them. You want to fire them. You want to do this. You want to do that for a year because you don't know our, our corporate culture. And so I don't want to hear from you. He literally said that. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you talked about, um, you know, how you help people, but explain to people so, to get them out of this, well, not me kind of syndrome. Why is it important that you are published as a speaker, as a coach, as a trainer? Why is that so very important? It's a good question. It's very important because you don't want to be the best kept secret in your industry. You want to be visible. You want to have authority. You want people, you want to be the go-to person in your industry. And so instead of clawing and clawing and trying to reach out to other people to convince them they should work with you, what you want is to walk into a room and have people go, oh, Vicki, I need your help so much. Can you help me get out in the world and help me speak and get more confidence and, you know, do all these things, you know, and, and so you want to be that go-to person. And a book is going to help you do that because it's going to get you on speaking stages. It's going to um, get you on radio shows and podcasts. It's going to get you invitations um, to places and make connections with people that you never would have if you hadn't written that book. Awesome. And that is so true. It, it brings awareness and, uh, and, and opportunities. Share your thoughts about um, traditional versus hybrid versus self-publishing. Okay. <laughs> we don't have enough time for- I know. It's a whole podcast on that, but- <laughs> It really is. So just in, in a brief nutshell, traditional publishing that most people know, Random House, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan, um, so those are all big traditional publishing houses, and everybody thinks that they are the holy grail. And at one point they were, but but the the difference is you need an agent um, to get a contract. You need a big social media platform, lots of followers. That's why they publish influencers and celebrities. And you also have to wait eighteen months to two years, even if you've got a contract for your book to get out into the world, mm. um, which is way too long for most of us as entrepreneurs. We want our content to get out, you know, mm. soon, mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Plus, in addition to that, they own the rights to your book, to your intellectual property. So you have to ask them permission. If you're going to a conference and you're making a speech and you're taking things out of your book and it's not time, you have to you want to make a course, you really have to go through all of this and get permission mm -hmm. um, uh, with your publisher. And most of us really want to own our, you know, our content so we can mm -hmm. repurpose it. So that's traditional. The advantage they have is they have sales reps, they go out to bookstores. And if your goal is to be in bookstores um, and, um, you know, and be a published author and do book signings and all of that, Traditional publishing is um, admittedly the best way to do that. Um, the second way to publish um, is self-publishing. And I'm sure many of the, your audience, the people in your audience, if they've written a book before, they've probably self-published with um, either what was called CreateSpace at the time, um, Amazon Unlimited CreateSpace. So they now have 
KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing, but self-publishing is just that. You have to find your own editor, your own typesetter, your cover designer. Um, how do you distribute? How do you market? How do you promote? All of those things you're in charge of. And if, frankly, if you don't even know the language of publishing, which is kind of like Greek, um, so you, um, you really have to do a lot of research on your own if you want to self-publish. The third is hybrid publishing. It's relatively new. Um, it's about 15 or 20 years um, into it. Um, and I think it's the best of both worlds, at least the way we do it, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, um, you have a whole team of people. We have already vetted our copy editors, our ghost writers and developmental editors. We have vetted our types editors and our cover designers, which is the most important thing. Um, we have vetted all these people. Plus we have trusted marketing partners. You want an Amazon bestseller campaign. You want to get on speaking stages and podcasts, do videos. We have, we work with a lot of people who do that so that you get all of the marketing um, robustness um, and you get the team of people to help you in production. You do have to pay for the services, but you do get most of the royalties. And so that's a huge difference in traditional publishing. You might get 12 to eight to 12% in, ro in royalties. We give you 80% of the royalties. So you make, you have stand to make a lot of money, right? So, um, and the, 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 Downside is we don't have um, sales reps that go into bookstores, but we do have techniques to help you get into bookstores, um, you know, to, to maximize um, that effect of the promotion. But we have lots of other ways to help you monetize your book besides just selling books. Very good. So how can people get in touch with you and your team if they have... Do, do you wait until you have an idea or do you have workshops to help generate ideas? Tell us a little bit more of how they can work with hybrid global publishing. Well, one of my favorite ways is we have a two day workshop called the Big Leap Retreat. Um, and it's a wonderful, it's a two day intensive. And if you have an idea, if you have 10 ideas, um, we encourage you to come um, and you, we actually help you create your, not only discover your big idea, what you're passionate about, but then um, you actually work on the outline with our, we have our editorial director. We, it's a great bonding experience. We only have 12 to 15 people at a time. We do do this four times a year because we want it to be a small, safe container, um, a lot of interaction. And then you get to do a two minute pitch about your book. Um, to a to a panel of people, you need to be on our panel, Vicky, next time. <laughs> um, so, and their coaches, and their literary agents, and their publicists, and there are speaking coaches. There are um, people who have heard pitches before, and so they rate you on your clarity and on mm -hmm. your messaging, and you get some real insight into whether the book you're going to be doing is going to resonate with people. And that's become one of the most popular features of the, of the, of the um, workshop. So we do that four times a year. It's called the Big Leap Retreat. So that's one way. If you already know your book and you're beginning to write, write it, we have developmental editors who can help you. You know your content. You probably have a lot more content than you actually think. And so... Um, you can come to us just at that idea stage and our developmental editors will help you create that outline and the synopsis of each chapter and help you write the book. Um, or if you already have a manuscript um, and it's either been copy edited, you can really come to us at any stage of development of your book because we have ways um, to channel you in terms of we meet you where you are. Awesome. So you, you mentioned the cover and, um, and I know for the, the four books that I've done, the cover is really important, but I want you to just talk to us a little bit about the impact of a good cover versus not so good. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so <laughs> a good cover evokes an emotion. 
in the mm-hmm. in your ideal reader. That's what you want. And that's why it's so important to figure out who your audience is, who is going to be your organic ideal reader. I call them your evangelical fans, mm-hmm. um, the most natural. And that's who you want to speak to. So are they modern and young or are they older, need bigger fonts? You know, these are all things that we discuss with our cover designer. It's a very collaborative process. Mm -hmm. So if you have a graphic that is meaningful to your audience, you know, that's something that we um, take into consideration. So that would be um, the elements of a good cover to evoke the right emotion um, in your ideal reader. A bad cover says nothing. So, you know, when people go into a bookstore, they, they might see, a you know, they might look at a cover for literally three seconds. And if they don't like it, they're not even going to pick it up to touch it. Mm -hmm. And the same with Amazon, you know, you're, you're um, putting in keywords or search words at Google or at Amazon Mm -hmm. and these books come up and literally if you don't, if the cover makes you feel a certain way, like if a cover makes me depressed and I'm not supposed to be depressed, <laughs> right, next. So I literally go on to something else. So that's why it's so important. Um, it is your number one biggest marketing tool that mm-hmm. you have. Um, and that's why if you're going to spend money, you spend it in two places. One with editing, which you certainly don't want to be criticized for uh, grammatical errors. That's the worst thing you could do Mm -hmm. when you're an entrepreneur and you have a brand. You don't want to be criticized for that. And you don't want to be criticized for your cover because you don't want to miss the audience and miss possible sales. So talk to us a little bit about size of a book, you know, size. The size um, matter matters, <laughs> but, but, you know, there are books that are little mini books that yeah. sell great. And there's midsize, you know, I, I think there's an author and I'll, I'll get it wrong, but there, his chapters are about four pages. Okay. And so it's such a fast read. And then you have, you know, the Harry Potters or the, the larger epic type of things or autobiographies talk to the folks to kind of take away some of that fear of well i don't think i could do a fifty thousand word or a hundred thousand word or whatever book right i actually spoke to a potential author yesterday um and he's written twenty two thousand five hundred words and um he said someone told me that it needed to be which turns out to be somewhere around a hundred page book and so he said but he said, and but somebody told me that it needed to be like 250 pages, and um, and it's about dating, you know. And, <laughs> and so he, he said, he I said, well, that would be 65,000 words. And he went, oh God. He said, I don't have that much to say. I'm kind of done. I think I said everything I needed to say, and that's absolutely right. And yeah. so I wouldn't worry about how many words you have, you know, we can, and you can get a spine. That's another kind of myth, you know, with, um, you know, 30,000 words these days. So, you know, or 20,000 words, we can always make a spine. That's not a big deal. And so the, the, the word count is not what matters. The content is what matters. We can always do, um, put in some graphics or photographs or quotes, you know, we can always fill up the book a little bit more if we need it. Yeah, awesome. Because I think that does kind of hold people back. They think, as as he said, well, I don't have that much to say about dating. <laughs> <laughs> the key is that what you have to say is impactful. And right. that's where that editor and, and the folks that you have are so helpful because they can either ask for more clarity from you to maybe pull out more content. So talk about the value of those sessions that we have with um, the editors. The editor. I think that is one of our most um, critical pieces of of this whole process. Um, And I think that our company is special because of that, because you actually get to interact with the editor. Um, and she's more than a copy editor. She's she's a combination. She can't even help herself. Even if I hire hire her just 
just do grammar and she can't help herself. So that's She's awesome. Wonderful. <laughs> she is awesome. That's what's wonderful about her that um, she will make suggestions about how to make things cleaner, how to make your story, whether it's nonfiction or fiction flow better, give you an mm -hmm. arc um, and, um, and really pull it together um, so that your outline, your chapters make sense um, and, and uh, put it in a particular order. And she has a way of making just sentences just soar. Yeah, you know, yeah. and so it's very, very important to have that personal relationship um, uh, with your editor. So they, she gets to know your voice, um, you know, because if they don't know your voice and what you're trying to say, they're going to edit it out for grammar and for formal formality, mm -hmm. right? For formal things, as opposed to it's okay to to have slang or to, you know, even to have words that are in your voice that aren't necessarily grammatically correct. Right. Yeah. I just thought she was fantastic. She puts you at ease. So it's not like the teacher, you know, your uh, English lit teacher that's telling you, oh, this is wrong or this is terrible. And you walk away right. thinking, I can't even publish this book. She really is wonderful. At She's great. You know, when she edits my stories, you know, and uh, and I see like all these red lines, right? And I'm going, oh, must must have been awful. And so, and um, but she's always like, Karen, this was amazing. You had so many important things to say. And she's like, and she, she means it. She finds mm -hmm. the good. She finds the positive. Um, mm -hmm. She sees the overview, but she's also helping you um, do the specific things to make it sound um, mm -hmm. better and to have more impact. Right. And then when that, bo that book come out, comes out, you just blossom in the confidence that you actually have a book with your name right. on it on a shelf somewhere. So awesome. right. All right. It's time now for you to tell us about your free gift that you have for all of our attendees today. So my gift is, it's called Karen's Million Dollar Rolodex. So I hope your audience is old enough to remember what a Rolodex <laughs> is, but basically <laughs> it's, it's um, my gift to you that I've been in publishing for more than 35 years. And so I have a lot of resources and um, connections with website designers and marketing people and visual people and coaches. I mean, editors, typesetters, um, cover designers, all of my resources um, are in this one place. Um, and that's why I call it Karen's Million Dollar Resource, uh, Million Dollar Rolodex, um, because they're all references and they're marketing websites that you can go to if you've self published a book. Um, and so I think it's really valuable whether you're publishing traditionally, hybrid, or self-publishing. And she also has, for those that have upgraded or are about to upgrade to VIP, she has a wonderful gift. Explain what that gift would be. It's a mini course called Three Keys to Bestseller. And so we talk about your why. It's very important to have your you know, why and understand why you're writing this book or you're never going to really finish the book. So we talk about the questions, you would do an assessment and so on and so forth. And the second module is the three options. We go into much deeper depth um, into the options of publishing, traditional, the pros and cons mm -hmm. of traditional self and hybrid. And the third one is the myths, the secrets revealed behind <laughs> Amazon's algorithms. Oh. And they are, yes, that's worth the price of tea, you know? <laughs> so um, they, they, um, it goes into the, how to choose your categories, you know, what to do if you want to create um, a number one bestseller and how the algorithms work and how to be on the first page of Amazon, which is where you want to be when people are typing in keywords or keyword phrases. Um, and so that kind of demystifies what happens behind the scenes at Amazon. So it's a mini course. We're giving that to VIPs only. Um, and it's, uh, you know, normally a fair amount of money and we're um, gifting it because Vicki is a dear friend. 
um, and to her audience, um, we're gifting that to you. Thank you so much. It has been a pleasure having you on my summit. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And again, if you want to find more, just reach out to Karen at Hybrid Global Publishing. And uh, I will be posting to all the VIPs also a list of all of the um, links for our guests. So you want to get that as well. Thanks Great. so much. Thank you, Vicki. Bye now.